Kinsey, a sad day, but we should smile as we remember Diana. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. It's been over 25 years now. We still celebrate her for her fashion, her compassion. Um, she's still such an important figure. I don't know that she knew at the time of her death that we would still be celebrating her life as, as fiercely as we do today. No, indeed. So what was special about Diana? Because I know that you've been captivated by her since you were a little girl. I mean, I just don't think that you typically, I would say uh, around the same time, we saw Diana and Elizabeth Taylor really, re they, they discovered how to take their celebrity and turn it into attention on something other than themselves. They wanted you to talk about the charities that they were involved with. They wanted you to talk about um, something bigger than themselves. And I would really credit Diana, I mean, on, on turning that obsession with her media wise into something that was so much bigger than she was and more important than she was. And that's, she was involved in breast cancer research, um, so famous for her AIDS outreach, um, just the way she would quietly visit hospices in the middle of the night and sit with people that were alone as they died. I, you know, you just don't see people like that in the world. And I think that, you know, you just had that conversation about Meghan Markle. It's hard today to find celebrities or even royals that care more about people in need, others outside of themselves. And when you do see that, you, you are amazed by it. You cling to it. You want to be more like that person. And Kinsey, these pictures remind us how stunningly beautiful she was, as well as empathetic, a complete one off star quality, the X factor. And she would have been 62. So if she was with us today, she would be gorgeous. She would be radiant and she would have so much to give. Yes, I, I mean, I do think one of the reasons why she has become such, um, you know, a martyr figure for us is aside from the fact that she really, truly did a lot of great work while she was here on Earth, she died in this angelic body and with this young face. I mean, she's forever young to us, similar to, you know, James Dean. Um, but I do think, I've been talking about this a lot lately. I do think that she would be back in the UK. I do think she would have spent some time in America because she was talking mm -hmm. about that towards the end of her life. But the second Prince George was born, I feel like she would have been back there. She was a, uh, would have been a very hands-on grandmother. And I think she would have been a, wanted to be around those babies. So I don't think America would have had her forever. How do you think Megxit would have played out on Diana's watch? If Diana had been around, would Harry and Meghan still be here? Would they be married? What do you think her influence would have been? I don't know if Meghan Markle would be around if Diana would have been here. I think that they might have butted heads. I think they might have clashed. Uh, I think that Harry would have married one of those beautiful young women that he was dating earlier in his life because they would have had him, you know, think about Chelsea Davies. She might have had a mentor there that could have said, here's how we're going to play this. Here's how you play your cards right. Here's how I dealt with things. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, the Catherine, the Princess of Wales, she had to navigate this stuff really on her own. She did an excellent job because she's got an incredible upbringing and a very strong family background. Um, but I do think maybe he would have married one of the women he dated earlier because they would have had a, a mentor of sorts that could have helped them navigate that that extreme attention. Indeed. So, well, look, let's move on now to her sons, uh, Harry and <laughs> William, who have paid tribute but not mentioned each other. This would be torture for Diana. Yeah, I think that they would be really disappointed by this. But Mark, I was honestly surprised to see it and, you know, re a little relieved to see that they both jumped in to participate in the Diana Awards video, knowing that the other was going to. I think it's a step forward. I know that I, I saw some negative press about it. Mm -hmm. I do think it's a step forward. Both men featured in the Diana Awards video. This is a cause that's extremely important to both of, of these young men. And uh, Right. They did not acknowledge each other. They didn't film it together, but they are 
you know, seemingly still working with each other, which I think is, is a good look. Indeed. Can we talk now about the Supreme Court in the United States, which has ended affirmative action, which is essentially a push for diversity, uh, giving you an advantage based on your skin color? What's the story? Yeah, this is in schools. This is how co colleges look through their applications and determine who they're going to accept into their schools. Um, there are states that have done away with this before. California is one of those states. Uh, there is a pushback on this, Mark. There are, are protests currently happening and a lot of people that are very unhappy that, you know, people of color wouldn't be rushed to the front of the line when it came to entrance, you know, school entries. However, CBS, which is one of our largest media outlets, media corporations here in the United States, did a poll. And while they're coverage has been very left-leaning and very, this is going back a thousand years or 50 years, I'm being dramatic, but while their coverage has been very left-leaning and very disappointed in the decision, they did a poll that said 70% of Americans did not think it was necessary to judge a person based on their skin color when it came to college acceptance. So I think this is really perhaps America talking, saying, choose us because we're the best. Choose us because we make more sense to you, not because of what we look like.